Hello, my name is Mike Morrison. I've been studying scientific posters for four years and trying to improve them. And I'm going to show you how to get more attention on your poster using science. So what you see right now is some common poster layouts that you'd see at any conference in science. So at the top left here, we have our very popular wall of text that has persisted since at least the 1980s without necessarily being tested for effectiveness. And then over here, we have some of these new poster layouts. These are the billboard style layouts that have become popular in the last four years. So which of these layouts and which features of each poster are most effective and which ones should you use on your next poster? Which one should you recommend to your students if you're a professor? And which one should you recommend to your presenters if you're organizing a scientific conference? So I'm going to be summarizing the results of a new study we just released at scienceux.org where we had 13 people wear really professional grade eye tracking equipment. We had them look at eight different poster designs. The study is linked in the description. Please go check it out if you want more. It includes a video of just the eye tracking data with no commentary from me if you'd prefer that. A special shout out to the first author on this paper, Ruth Foster. She really did all of the work to organize this study and run the participants and analyze the data. So thanks again, Ruth, for doing what I think is one of the best eye tracking studies on scientific posters, even though it's just a 13 person pilot. We're going to be seeing eye tracking data that looks like this. It looks like heat maps or sometimes animated heat maps of people looking at different scientific poster layouts. So what you're seeing here are simulated eye tracking analysis. So they're what machine learning algorithms think people will look at on these different poster layouts. I want you to notice two things when you go through this eye tracking data. What you're looking for first is the focus of the pattern. You see how this pattern on the right is really, really focused. And on the left, this wall of text pattern is like really scattered in attention. That matters. So a lot of people think that design is very subjective and just touchy feely, but there is an objective scientific component to good design, and that's called visual hierarchy. It's how well a design directs the eyeballs, takes your eyeballs on a tour. And what they found, study linked in the description, is that in a good design, a lot of people will look at parts of the design in the same order. And in a bad design, people's focus will be on all over the place and they won't really know where to look. What you're seeing on the left with a wall of text that is used across science to communicate really important research is a bad, ineffective design. And you're seeing the evidence of that already in this simulated eye tracking. This scattered heat map is a symptom of visual clutter. You didn't need eye tracking to tell you that this wall of text design is cluttered, but here we are. On the right, this is a clearly better design. It's not perfect but it clearly takes the eyeballs on a more focused tour. So that's the first thing I want you to pay attention to, focus versus scatter. The second thing I want you to pay attention to is what's under the hotspots. So if you only read the hotspots on these posters, what would you take away? What would you learn as a scientist? On the left here, if you look at the hottest spot on this poster, you'd take away the school logo. Super valuable for your research. On the right, if you only looked at the hotspots, you'd be taking away like the main finding, a key figure, the method summaries, one of the graphs. That's a lot more useful information. So we want to design posters that take the eyeballs on a tour of useful information. I want to show you the winning poster first. In all the posters we tested, this is my personal recommendation after seeing the eye tracking data come in. I want you to feel what it feels like for a really effective design before we get into the rest of them that are going to be less effective than this. And that way you can notice for the rest of the poster layouts where they went wrong. The most important aspect of this poster design is that it doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. It has less content than a wall of text. It even has a little less content than a better poster or something. If you read every single part of this poster out loud, it would take you less than one minute. But it still feels like full, like people like to see in science. It uses the space for bigger stuff, not more stuff. Everything you add to a poster competes with everything else, so if you put less on there, there's less competition. The other thing this poster has is a really effective visual hierarchy. We're going to be using that term a lot. It basically means the order of things that you look at on a design. You kind of want to arrange a design by most important to least important and make people look in that order. Sometimes it works, they look in that order, sometimes it doesn't. The way this poster creates a good hierarchy is by using different levels of contrast. So your eye generally goes to where the most contrast is first and then less contrast and less contrast. The best place you can see that contrast on this poster is right here. You see how right here it switches from black text on a white background to black text on a gray background? Black on gray is lower contrast than black on white. And then down here at the bottom, we have gray on gray, which is even less contrast. So at the top with the mood effects attention at work, we have super high contrast. Next to the big figures are a little bit less contrast. 
The methods and analysis are black on gray, which is a little bit less contrast. And then the final layer, the authors and the school logo and the stuff that doesn't matter for learning is gray on gray, which is even less contrast. That's going to create a really, really clear visual hierarchy. Okay, let's watch the eye tracking data. They're going to scan across the top. Mood affects attention at work. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Now they moved on to the first figure. A couple people moving on to the second figure right here. Now right here, this single frame is one of the proudest moments of my entire life, as pathetic as that is. I am so proud of what this single frame says. And the coolest part of that is right here. No one is looking at the fourth level of the hierarchy. No one. There are no green dots down here on the methods. That means that this hierarchy is functioning extremely well. Nobody's going out of order at this stage. 13 people, nobody's looking at what they're not supposed to be looking at. That's a very effective visual hierarchy that you can see in the eye tracking. Let's play. Now they're down here. Now they're getting into methods and analysis. They're reading and things like that. And they're kind of going out of order in this section. So this, the overall layout of this method section doesn't actually work that well within itself. But getting people to these different sections worked extremely well. Now they're just scanning all over the place. Cool. So that's a really effective poster. Let's see the less effective posters. And no discussion of ineffective design is complete without a mention of the old paper on a poster wall of text approach. Now this particular wall of text has one extremely effective modification that you can use on your walls of text. So if you work for a PI or something that won't let you try some of the modern effective poster layouts and they want you to just cover it in text, you can make one tiny little change to make your poster actually work much, much better and your PI probably won't notice. And that's this right here. See how the top doesn't have authors under it? It has all of this negative space around the title area. That negative space in design helps people find signal in the noise. It also has a really clear takeaway statement. Text analysis can predict social conflict in teams. Boom. If you only read that on this entire poster, you would still learn something. Now watch the eye tracking. Watch how well this negative space draws attention to the takeaway statement. Watch right here. Ready? Do, 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 right across the top. That's super, super clear. Now the rest of the poster, the attention immediately scatters all over the place with some attention in the top left. So this part worked really well. Rest of the poster, just clutter. Okay, here's what I would call an improved wall of text. Compared to the average wall of text, this is a great poster. And the best part of this poster to me is right here. This gap between the headings. They left all of this nice space around these headings so you can orient really quickly. And they did a good job with, you know, creating some column layout. But one thing I want you to notice is that if you notice this title area is actually kind of cluttered in a typical way. Like they did a nice job trying to isolate the title right here, but they still added their authors and their school logos around it and things like that. If you compare this to what we saw in the last slide, that really clean negative space around the title area, this one with the clutter around the title is going to perform worse than the eye tracking. What you're going to see is that attention goes to this title, but it kind of jumps all over the title. It doesn't go clear left to right. Watch. Jump, jump, jump all over the place kind of left to right, all over. I want you to compare the eye tracking performance of this title area where there's these authors and logos crowding it and this title area where it's just a takeaway and negative space. Watch the difference in the eye tracking. So first the one on the left, kind of jumping around. Now watch the one on the right again. Clear left to right movement in the same order, 13 people. That's the power of negative space. Don't clutter your takeaway at the top move your authors to the bottom. I know that violates this like sacred title, the authors that contributed kind of narrative of science, but if you want to teach people fast and you want attention, authors to the bottom, let your takeaway breathe in negative space. And then these columns kind of work. People kind of pick a column and start skimming. See over here, the headings are working. One person's scanning this one, another one's over here, another one's over here. Good attention on the headings. Again, those headings in negative space worked really, really well. The columns feel really usable, but in practice, people jump all over the place because there's just so much content. I think in person, these columns would have worked better than on a screen. Okay, let's take a look at this version one better poster. This is the original billboard style poster layout that I released in 2019 that went viral in that better poster cartoon. The whole point of this design was to get people to take away at least one learning from every poster by setting it in a giant takeaway inside of negative space, like a billboard. And what we're going to see in all of these version one better poster layouts in the eye tracking is that the center area works extremely well as designed to draw attention. Columns, 
mostly focus people, but not perfectly. Here we go, right in the middle mostly, still reading in order, now onto the columns. You can see though that some people started reading the column kind of early over here. There's kind of some tension between these two. Again, with this one shows that this central hero area works really well. Watch this, right in the middle, all in the same order mostly, and now it scatters, kind of concentrated in this column. Okay, so this one is really interesting. And these authors did a great job with this poster, making the figures really big, adding icons. But something interesting is going to happen in the eye tracking. So there are two things that are going to throw off the eye tracking. One, this white text on the medium blue background isn't actually that high contrast, which means it's not going to draw your eye as sharply. And the other cool thing is that they used photographs for their authors, which usually that's great. Like, I really think that makes a more engaging poster. It gets attention. But when they put it next to this medium contrast area, it starts having some tension for the visual attention system. So your eyes are naturally drawn to faces. And so when you have faces that are drawing your eye and a medium contrast area, it's going to actually start splitting the attention between these two areas, which is really, really cool. Watch. You see it's split. Some people are reading the takeaway, some people are reading the column already. I suspect that if they had used a darker background blue, and move these photographs over to the left away from the hero area to get them a little bit more distal, I think you wouldn't have seen that clear split attention effect. Okay, here is a version one better poster by one of my favorite better poster creators. And what he tried to do with this one was actually create a Z layout within his takeaway area. So if you notice, there's this Z scanning pattern, like the takeaway, Drake, example one, example two, conclusion. It goes in a Z. People naturally read in that Z pattern, so this was a really good idea. And you're gonna see in the eye tracking that this was really effective at keeping people's attention in this area. There's just a lot of visual interest going on in a predictable order. And then these sidebars are kind of cluttered and they don't have a lot of space around them, so those are gonna work less well. But if you actually read these, like he's an incredible writer. He's incredible at writing these takeaway statements that are really, really efficient. Well, let's watch. Right in the middle, going on Drake's face, the examples, not like even right here, a lot of the attention's in the middle, not a lot of column attention. Like this first layer of his visual hierarchy with one, two, three, four, five steps is working really, really well. And now they're starting to get in the sidebars, and now they're reading this sidebar a little bit over here. The moral of this poster is if you're gonna put a lot of stuff in your hero area, try to put it on a Z layout or something. Okay, here is a generation two better poster nicknamed the presenter. I also call this the party on the left, business on the right layout. You kind of have fun over here on the left with a big takeaway statement and a key visual in a lot of negative space. And then you just have very big graphs over on the right with takeaway statements at the top of each graph. Authors at the bottom, as I usually recommend. But overall, the takeaway and the visual takeaway works and these like, takeaways at the top of each graph, they're going to work really, really well. You've heard if you've read data visualization books and things that you should always have takeaways at the top of each graph. You're going to see why in a second. They really, really draw the attention. People really do like reach for them like, you know, like life rafts or something. Just like help explain this to me really fast. Graphs are slow. Takeaways are fast. Okay, let's watch. Here we go. On the left right here, reading the key, key takeaway. Now they're looking at the visual. Some people have moved on. And now we've moved on to skimming these titles, these takeaways at the top of each graph. The biggest win of this poster layout actually is that everybody read everything. So in our study, this poster had like 100% content consumption. People read everything on the poster because the poster doesn't have much on it. If you only put five things on your poster and people take away five things, you're doing so much better than everybody else who created a wall of text that people read none of. Also, anecdotally, this is the better poster layout that I've been recommending for the last couple of years. This one is a little bit more data centric than the original hyper minimalist billboard, and that makes people sort of emotionally respond to it much better. And now that you've seen the other poster layouts, I want to show you the most effective poster again so you can see one more thing that you didn't notice last time. Remember that there were two things to look for in eye tracking. First, the focus of the eye tracking pattern, focus versus scatter. And the second, what's under that focus? What are they actually looking at? As you scan this poster, you're learning constantly. It speaks in takeaway statements. So you have mood affects attention at work. You're learning. Negative affect is distracting, which lowers job performance. Okay, I see they use an SEM model. Here's a big figure. Moving on. Positive affect promotes focus, which improves job performance. Another SEM. 
Now I'm down here in methods. And then the original author did this great notional graph where you have mood over time of day and like survey, survey, survey. You can just scan that graph and get a sense of the data collection. Big sample size. You can read this entire poster from four or five feet away in less than a minute and learn three takeaway statements, their data collection method, and their analysis. That's an effective research poster, and this is the layout I'll be recommending to conferences starting very soon. I don't have a PowerPoint version of this one yet that you can start with, so you're going to have to recreate it on your own, but I'll have that up soon too. Thanks for watching. If you want help deploying better poster designs at your scientific conference, get in touch with me. If you want feedback on your own posters, I really recommend checking out the Science UX Reddit. You can post your poster there, and at least me or some other designers will give you feedback. You can also reach me on social media or at my new curve note journal, scienceux.org. And if you want to teach this stuff, if you teach science communication and you want to show people how to design a more effective research poster using science, then I've linked below to the PowerPoint file that contains all the slides for this video. Please just give a shout out to Ruth for doing the original study, also linked below. But beyond that, go nuts. Use the slides in all your classes. Make YouTube videos of your own out of them. I just want this to change. Because changing science is hard and I need your help.